a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. We hear sound and music everywhere, even in our imaginations. But what about the world that exists outside of our planet? Can something as awesome as a star really sing? In today's talk, artist and astrophysics professor Katrian Kohlenberg helps us hear the soundtrack of the cosmos. Our universe is full of sound. In the depths of space, planets of all flavors crackle and roar. Stars are ringing like giant bells. Massive lighthouses signal their cosmic pace, and merging black holes occasionally send ripples through the fabric of space-time. And this is just the tip of the cosmic iceberg. We are surrounded by our universe, and yet we don't hear any sounds coming from out there. Most of what we know about the universe comes to us through light of some sort. The light we can see is part of what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. Radio waves, microwaves, ultraviolet, ultraviolet infrared, um, gamma rays, X-rays, so that's a broad spectrum, and we can only see a part of that. But our universe is radiating in all of these parts of the spectrum. Sound is a vibration. As I pluck the metal string, Its vibration is passed on to the wooden body of my cello, and the whole instrument creates waves in the air that then travel to your ears. Without the air in this room or the atmosphere, you would not hear any sound. The way the instrument is built, its shape, the kind of wood, the artistry of its creator, there's a specific sound quality that is unique to each instrument. And that makes a cello sound different from a piano, for example. Now, the pitch range of an instrument is related to its size. Just think of the sound of a violin or a double bass compared to my cello. Now, let's take the step from musical instruments to living beings. We know of animals that are smaller or bigger than ourselves and that communicate with sounds that are either too high or too low in pitch for our human ears. And let's take the step a bit further, from instruments to living beings to heavenly bodies, generally much bigger than us, but also resonating with sound. And an example is our own planet. From the rumbles of Earth, we can learn a lot about the inside of our planet. And this research is now also done on other planets. Here you hear the first Mars quake, recorded with the inside lander on the surface of the red planet. Sounds different because the composition of Mars is different from Earth's composition. So for our human ears, stars have a pitch far too low. Moreover, the space between us and the stars light years away, 40,000 years to get there, this space is empty, so there is no medium for the sound to be transported from the stars to our Earth. Then, how do we know that these stars are vibrating? We can see it. We can hear it, but we can see it. Why? Because as a star vibrates, it contracts and expands. As it contracts, it gets hotter and brighter. And as it expands, it gets, coo- it gets cooler and dimmer. And this happens periodically. So we can record these periodic brightness variations with cameras attached to our telescopes. And hence, we can get back to the properties of the sound that caused the light variations. And it turns out that every star has its own particular timbre, its own sound quality, just like each instrument. So from these sounds, so from the sound spectrum, we can learn so much about the inside of the star. 
Now, I told you that the pitch of the star is very low, way lower than this lowest string on the cello. But what we can do is we can make them audible. So we'll take the star melodies, the star chords, and we will play them several octaves higher, which comes down to speeding up the sound waves so they land in the audible range, and then we can hear them. And that is what reveals us what is happening inside the star. Now, the next time you watch a sunset, please be aware that our sun is buzzing with sound. Our sun was the first star for which we figured out that we could use similar techniques as people studying earthquakes to figure out the inside of our star. A red giant. This is a star that's at least 10 times bigger than our sun. And from the sound of the star, total different sound, isn't it? Now, Becoming a red giant is the fate of our sun. In about five billion years, it will swell up to become a red giant. And even later, our sun will shrink to become a white dwarf. This is a star that has the size of our Earth, and it's very dense. You see a model of another star for which the sound you hear now reveals that it is made of diamonds, very dense crystalline carbon. We're figuring out ways to get there. When we leave Earth and we fly outward the solar system towards the stars, we fly by a few giant planets. And here, you hear the sounds of Jupiter. What you hear are radio waves, so these are invisible electromagnetic waves, turned into sounds. Even spookier, are the sound waves that translate the interactions between Saturn and one of its moons, Enceladus. Again, here, the spacecraft was hit by radiation and we turned it into sound. Now, we've heard stars in different phases of their lives, some at the end of their lives, but actually we can even learn about stars after they have officially died, through sounds. Now, this can happen to a very massive, very heavy star at the end of its life. Now, 1.3 billion years ago, somewhere in a faraway corner of our universe, two massive black holes were circling each other in a cosmic dance. They were spiraling in, and at some point, they merged. And their union sent ripples through the fabric of space-time that hit our Earth a few years ago. And we recorded it. That was the first detection of gravitational waves. In this case, there is no light involved, not even sound involved, but the whole space, the whole universe, space-time, was vibrating at the pace of an audible sound. And if we turn it into sound, this is it. <laughs> Here you hear the final kiss of two cosmic monsters shaking up the entire universe. And this is happening frequently out there. But don't worry, they're far away, so they're not affecting us. But space-time is actually vibrating. Now, today, the world has become our living room. The solar system, our backyard. When we look up at the sky, we see serenity. But now you know that the whole universe is teeming with sounds. And there's a lot of dramatic, spectacular scenes out there. Whether humanity continues or not, the stars will keep on singing. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in Antwerp, Belgium. 
All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Antwerp. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.